Okay, welcome to the first lesson in general knowledge. And I thought I'd start off the general knowledge section by taking a look at literature. And the reason for that is because literature is probably one of the most frequently assessed subtopics in the general knowledge section. Now, before I actually go in and explain how you study for this topic, I want to quickly show you what a general knowledge question regarding literature could look like. And it could look something like this. The novel Great Expectations was written by which of the following authors? And then they've listed the authors here. Now, really, there's no technique to these types of questions. You either know it or you don't. And if you don't know it, well, unfortunately, there's nothing you can do. You just have to move on. But the good thing with these types of questions is that they're actually very simple and they're not trying to trick you. You can see here they're not asking you for an analysis of the text Great Expectations or anything like that. It's super simple. They just want the name of the author. If you know that, you will get the mark. You don't need to apply any literary techniques or anything like that. You don't even have to have read the book. You just need to know that the author is Charles Dickens. And then you've got the mark. Now, oftentimes the question will be this simple. It'll ask you something like, where was this book written? In what time period was it written? Who is the author? Something super simple like that. In some cases, it'll look a bit more difficult. Like this case here. Which of the following authors did not receive a Nobel Prize in literature? Now, at first glance, you might think this question is unreasonable. It is asking you for very specific information about five people. I mean, how on earth are you supposed to know if these five people won a Nobel Prize or not? And if it looks too complicated or too unreasonable, there's going to be a trick to the question. And the trick in this question is the following. The Nobel Prize only started getting awarded in the 1900s onwards. And one of these authors is not from the 1900s. Charles Dickens. He was active in the 1800s and he died in the 1800s, so he cannot have won the Nobel Prize because the Nobel Prize only started in the 1900s. So if they are going to ask you a trick question, it'll be something like this. But really, this isn't even a trick question. It just requires you to think a bit. Now, maybe you're thinking to yourself, OK, that's great, but I don't even know who Charles Dickens is and I don't know who any of these people are. How am I supposed to learn all this stuff? I mean, there are thousands of authors out there. Are you supposed to learn something about all of them? And the answer to that is, of course, no. That would be a complete waste of time, and really the IMAT isn't going to be that unreasonable. The focus of this lesson is going to be explaining to you what literature you should study, and then what about that literature you should know. Okay, so let's start off with what books you should consider. What do we actually mean by literature? Well, really, there's no hard definition or anything like that, but for the IMAT purposes, you should focus on the classics. For instance, Hamlet by William Shakespeare. That is a classic. It is a fundamentally important piece of literature in the English language. That is something worth paying some attention to. But the autobiography by Hilary Clinton? No, I wouldn't waste any time learning about that. Now, quick disclaimer, I cannot promise you 100% that you won't get a question regarding an autobiography by Hillary Clinton. All I can say is that it is extremely unlikely and you should not waste any study time on it. You should focus on the classics. Now, what counts as a classic? Well, again, there's no strict definition, but think about books that have been important to culture and that are oftentimes quite old. You know, if the book was written in the year 2000, well, then it's not going to be a classic. And also think about books that would logically appear in an English class for a high school or a middle school student. These are the types of books that you should study. Now, I've actually written down a bunch of authors to make this easier for you. So once you're done with this video, look at those authors. But a quick note, the list is obviously not exhaustive. I can't predict 100% of the books that will come up on the IMAT. That's just not possible. But I have written down the ones that are most important and the ones that are likely to show up. And also, before we move on, some very important advice. If there is any Italian author, pay special attention to that. And that goes for the whole general knowledge section, not just literature. Anything Italian gets priority. Now, if you yourself are Italian, well, then you have an advantage. But if you're not Italian, then learn about the Italian authors. Just Google it and you'll see a long list. And I've actually written a few down in the written section as well for you. OK, so hopefully this explains to you what literature is and what books you should focus on and which ones you should not focus on. All right, now that we know what literature is, how do we begin to study for the literature section? Well, you do it this way. You study books by the author. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, what I mean is that you should learn facts about the author and then apply them to the books because this becomes a much more efficient way to study. So I'll give you an example. Charles Dickens over here, you need to know a few things about him. 
For instance, he was from England, so he's an English author. He was a novelist, so he wrote novels, and he was active during the 1800s. And then you need to know a few of his books as well. And here's the thing about studying books by the author. If you know this about Charles Dickens, you can apply these facts to all of his works. For instance, Oliver Twist. If you remember that he wrote Oliver Twist, well, then you know that Oliver Twist is an English novel and it's from the 1800s. Same thing about David Copperfield. That's a novel that Charles Dickens wrote. So you know that David Copperfield is an English novel from the 1800s. Same thing with Great Expectations. It's from Charles Dickens, so you know that that is an English novel from the 1800s. This is much more effective than trying to memorize facts about individual books. If you had to remember that Oliver Twist was an English novel from the 1800s and David Copperfield was and Great Expectations was, well, then you're going to mix them up. Just remember something about the author and then remember all the major books that he wrote and then all those facts about the author will be applicable to the books, in most cases at least. So this is very important. It'll save you a lot of time and it'll make memorizing all this stuff a lot easier. Okay, so that was how you study for the literature section, but what is it that you should actually know about the author? Well, you need to know the following. You need to know who he or she was and where he or she was from. You should also remember when roughly he or she lived. Now I say roughly, you know, don't try to remember specific dates. That's never gonna stick in your head. So just roughly. For instance, with Charles Dickens, just remember the 1800s. Some authors will also have something very significant about them. So if they have any special significance, remember that. That could be something like winning a Nobel Prize. That's a big deal, so it's something you should remember about the author. Then, of course, we come to the most important thing to remember about the author. What books did they write? Now, some authors wrote a lot of books. For instance, if they wrote 15, well, don't bother actually learning about all 15 of them. Just focus on the most important ones. Now, if you look up the Wikipedia page of an author, you will often find their most significant books are mentioned pretty much straight away in the first few paragraphs or in their bio or something like that. Focus on those ones. Don't learn about all the minor books they wrote because that's less likely to show up in the IMAT. Now, simply memorizing the names of the books they wrote isn't enough. You have to know a bit about the books themselves. First of all, was there anything significant to the book? Did this book have any major impact? If so, put that to your notes. On top of that, you should know briefly what the book was about in about one or two sentences. Don't write paragraphs about it and try and memorize that. That's not efficient for the IMAT. Just one or two sentences should be fine. Now, I recommend maybe going on YouTube and watching a 10 minute summary of the book just so you know what it's about or going on Wikipedia and quickly reading the synopsis. Now, I recommend this because if you have no clue what the book is about and you just remember in one sentence what it's about, well, then you're likely going to mix it up with other books. For instance, if you have no clue what Oliver Twist is about and you just remember in your notes that he's an orphan boy from England, well, then maybe you will mix that up with, let's say, David Copperfield or something else and think that David Copperfield is an orphan from England and then you will get the question wrong. So. Make sure you at least have a rough idea of what the book is about. You don't need to know any details or anything like that, but have a rough idea and then summarize it in one or two sentences. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is do all these things for an author. And then once I've done that and shown you how to do it, I want you to do the same for all the authors that I've written down in the written summary. Now, of course, that list is not exhaustive. If you want to go even further and add your own authors, by all means do so. Okay, so the author I will do with you is Dante Alighieri. This man is super high yield study for the literature section because he is, first of all, Italian. And second of all, he's probably one of the most, if not the most important Italian authors of all time. So you definitely want to know a bit about him and a bit about the books he wrote. Okay, what can we say about Dante? Well, he was an Italian poet from Florence. When did he live? Well, he lived in the 1200s to 1300s. What was significant about him? Well, quite a few things, but we're going to summarize it to that he established the use of the vernacular Italian, and he was also one of the tre corone, or three crowns of Italian literature. What books did he write? Well, the most important one was the Divine Comedy. Now, what can we say about the Divine Comedy? Well, the Divine Comedy was the most important poem of the Middle Ages and the greatest literary work in the Italian language. So definitely high yield stuff for the IMAT. Now, what was the Divine Comedy about? Well, first of all, it has three parts, Inferno, Purgatorio and Paradiso. 
And roughly the book is about Dante traveling between hell, purgatory, and heaven. And it's symbolic of the soul's journey to God. Okay, so here I've summarized Dante Alighieri quite well. There's a lot of content here and it doesn't take long to do and it's something that you can feasibly remember for the IMAT. Remember, you could write tons about Dante, but you also have to remember it for the IMAT. So don't write more than you can remember. Now, what I've done here for Dante, I want you to do for all the authors that I've written down. And of course, any authors that you want to add yourself. And I'll just close with a warning. Don't overstudy. Don't learn tons of information about all these authors and expect that to be worth your time. It won't be. It's very basic stuff that you have to know about all these people. So don't waste precious study time that could go to the biology section or the chemistry section or one of the other sections. No, make it very concise and then move on once you've done it. And never write more than you can feasibly remember because otherwise you're just wasting time.